So I just got done cleaning the guinea cage and I feel disgusting. I mean, I do that every day because the kids won't. They're pets, not mine. But you know, if they don't do it, then the guineas are just dirty and that's gross. So I just did that right now. And you know, like I washed my hands and did the whatevers, but I, I feel nasty and I don't really want to be in front of the camera, but you know, I have to do this before I can go take a shower because it's getting late in the day, really. So I'm here dirty. And so if you see like any like random like flying hairs or anything going on, I'm sorry. I'm super sorry. I just, I have a life outside of this. A big one. There's a lot. You only get me for like 20 minutes a day. So there's a lot that goes on in all of the other minutes, really. And today, right before this, was guinea pig cage cleaning. I'm not actually making like a soap for guinea pigs or anything today. I'm just, you're my people. Here's my story. And that's it. I will tell you all about what we are doing today in just a minute. But before I do, hello, I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You're at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things, and you are here for day 64 of 365 days of soap, and today we're doing something kind of cool. So if you're new to the channel and this is the first time you're seeing my face, welcome. We've been waiting for you. Thanks for being here. Subscribe. Yes. But you may not know that we do daily content and we have like a structure that we follow, right? And so three days a week, we do back to basic stuff, deep diving into very specific parts of the soap making world. We do a recipe day and then we do a test and a business building day. And today is a back to basics day wherein we are going to be talking about fragrance oils and essential oils and what you can and cannot do with them in soap and also how to use them. Because there's actually a lot of confusion about that, especially going from company to company when it comes to fragrance oils. Some companies will be like, yeah, use your fragrance oils at 5%, but then other companies will list the IFRA max usage, and sometimes that can be up to 100%, right? And so that gets confusing. How do you determine how much scent, be it fragrance oil or essential oil, that you're gonna need in your soap? And also, we're gonna talk about what does or does not survive the saponification process as far as we know. So, you know, it's a lot to cover. So let's get to the video and we can chit chat about all of that, you know, there. I hate when I have a small, short video and I want to talk about a big topic. So essential oils versus fragrance oils. Let's start with essential oils. We know what they are. You know, they're, they're, they come from plants. They are usually steam distilled. All of that jazz. Um, if you believe in it, they provide medicinal benefits, although there is nothing in the world that says that, it, that essential oils actually do that. But if you believe in it, it works. And I am not having that conversation as to whether or not they are beneficial or whatever, because this is not that video. And I'm talking about the usage of essential oils versus fragrance oils in soap. Soap is a, is a rinse off product, right? So we keep that in mind for both, but there is still interesting evidence that suggests both no beneficial therapeutic benefits of essential oils survive saponification and 
beneficial therapeutic and or allergenic parts of essential oils survive saponification. So there's good information on both sides of the aisle with that, which means we don't know. And since we don't know, we are careful with our essential oil usage. Now, I like to keep my total essential oil blend between like two and 4% regardless of what I'm making. So like 2% if I was using, if I was making a hot process soap or a melt and pour soap and 4% if I was making cold process. Now blending essential oils, I like to use, if I want to do like an orange or a lavender, for example, those are very fleeting, very light notes that will burn off in saponification and they will get lighter. And so I like to ground them with sort of headier scents like uh, your cedar woods, your sandalwoods, your anise, that sort of thing. One thing that you definitely have to keep in mind when you are making essential oil blends though is that the IFRA ratings for essential oils vary widely. Some can only be used at like, you know, 0.2%. Others can be used up to 5%. So you do have to keep that in mind when you're making those blends. Also, Flashpoint, just as a thing, that does not mean that the scent is going to burn off. Flashpoint is what is the temperature that the oil could ignite if exposed to a flame, but that has nothing whatsoever to do with the heat of soaping. So it's not going to burn off the scent in the soap process. Okay, now, so fragrance oils, what's the deal with those? Well, one, they're really they're really fun to use, right? There's, they come in a ton of different varieties. And for if you are of the mindset that allergens and irritations and, you know, all that jazz from essential oils survive saponification, fragrance oil is a better bet to use if you're, you know, looking to soap large scale and you want to feel comfortable giving, you know, a pregnant woman a soap, for example, because, or a baby a soap, because pregnant women and babies, they avoid all kinds of stuff for sure. I mean, for good reason too. Like they avoid all kinds of essential oils. Fragrance oils in and of themselves, it's interesting. If you find yourself on the right website, fragrance oils are the goddamn devil and essential oils are the savior of all things. And I don't think either one of those things are true. I don't like speak that is such black and white fundamentalist. Like it is this or this. If you're doing it this way, then you're doing it wrong. I disagree with that just as a general rule in all things in life, but also when it comes to soap making. Fragrance oil is, especially now, the way that fragrance oils are formulated, the, the bulk of them that I've worked with, they actually start with an essential oil base and they have very responsible uh, synthetics that go into them highly tested. They have to be, they have all of their MSDS, all of their, you know, they can be safe to use if you're using them in the right amounts. And those right amounts really do come down to what your fragrance oil or your essential oil to that provider tell you they are based on the data sheets. So just as a general rule though, I stick around 5% for all of my my soaps when I'm using fragrance oils. And you will see with some fragrance oils, it gets very confusing because some fragrance oils will be like, well, you can use this up to 100%. Well, that's the IFR rate, A rating. That's what's saying this is skin safe up to this amount. You would not actually want to do that in a soap because the, the essential oils and the fragrance oils, they don't really, they're not... <sighs> They're not exactly part of the saponification process. Saponification sort of exists around it, right? Is the lye solution is looking for the fatty acids and you know all the jazz. And so as a result, you're gonna end up with a lot of seepage and weeping and all the things if you use, you know, fragrance oils in that high of an amount. Also to that with essential oils too. But with both of these, I would say that the biggest thing that you really have to concern yourself with is what type of soap that you want to make. What do you want to make? If you want to make a soap that smells like bananas, it's going to be very, very hard to come up with a blend in essential oils to make that soap. There's already a banana scent out there though, so you can do that. If you don't feel comfortable using fragrance oils, don't do it. If you don't feel comfortable using essential oils, don't do it. 
But regardless of what you use, you have to make sure that you check the data sheets and the IFRA. All legitimate companies will have that information for you so you can determine exactly how much you need to use. Now, back to the whole essential oils and what sticks through saponification. Again, we don't know. We don't know. But what I do know is that if a gal comes into my shop and she's pregnant and she's saying, I'm avoiding eucalyptus, well, I'm not giving her a eucalyptus bar, whether it's a fragrance oil or an essential oil. Like, I'm just not going to do that. I'm going to steer her in a different direction, just period. Because it's not my job to determine what she can and cannot use in her pregnancy. I don't know her life. That is not the thing. And so, you know, pay attention to that with everything that you're using and make sure that you stay within the skin safe usage. And, oh, we're not talking about how you actually calculate those percentages. Okay, we're, we're going to do that. We're going to do that right now as soon as we, you know, show you the top of this really pretty bar and go on to the cut. So, you know, let's go there. I totally said irritations earlier, not irritants, and that makes me big mad. Whatever. Um... Yeah, so the percentage, how do you calculate the percentage? Well, with a fragrance oil, it's pretty straightforward. It is uh, whatever percentage you would like. Again, I stick my soaps at right around 5% based on the total oil weight of the batch. Not the whole batch weight, the total oil weight. If you stick within that range, you're going to be safe for all, all scents, all fragrance oils, um, except for the ones that say, like, you should not use this above 1%. But honestly... If there's a scent out there that says don't use this above 1%, just don't even bother buying it because you're going to have to blend it with something else and it's going to be a huge pain and then it's going to start to feel like essential oils. Now essential oils, same thing. You figure that percentage based on the total oil weight, not the total batch weight. And the reason for that is everybody actually soaps differently with the amount of water or liquid they put into their soaps. Like me, for the most part, I end up at about 2.4 times my lye solution for all of my water, but a lot of people do water discounts. A lot of people do you know, regardless, what, whatever. The majority of that water is going to no longer exist in the bar after, you know, saponification and a good cure. It will continue to lose water weight. And so you don't want to factor your scents based on the total batch. You want to factor your scents based on the oil. Does that make sense? I think that makes sense. Right. Now, for essential oil percentages, again, you do have to look at a spread. If you're going to be blending essential oils, which I recommend you do, it really will help everything stick better. I recommend blending and looking at the percentage rates. And so let's say you wanted to put like, oh God, uh, well, anise is a good one or cinnamon. Those have really low usage rates like really low IFRA rates for all, for a leave-on, a rinse-off, whatever. I think it's like 0.5% or something for cinnamon. And so, well, you, you're not going to make a bar with just cinnamon, right? And so you're going to want to blend that with something that will enhance that cinnamon scent without, you know, completely overpowering it. 0.5% of cinnamon is actually a lot. Like I would never really do that. Just a little teeny tiny bit for cinnamon. But you could blend it with, you know, a sandalwood or a cedar or a vetiver, um, even an anise. But again, that gets, that's a lower percentage usage too. And really help it stick, but still get, you know, essentially enough essential oils that your bar smells like something. Otherwise, you've just wasted money, right? Like you're just... If you're just putting in that 0.5% of the cinnamon through an entire batch, it's probably not going to survive saponification. If it does, it will be super duper light, which means, you know, you've just put an extra 10 bucks into your soap for really no good reason. So when it comes down to fragrance versus essential oils, neither are right, neither are wrong. It all comes down to what you want to do in your soaping journey and just make sure that you follow the IFRA ratings and you don't over scent any of your soaps and that is a uh, day 64 and there it is all things essential oil fragrance oil soap related for your viewing and listening pleasure i hope you guys took notes i tend to talk really fast when i have a bunch of information to get out in a short time frame but you know if there's more questions about any of this we will be doing a live again at some point and you can ask and 
we can dive more into all of that for sure. Yes. I, again, really hope you guys learned something and had a good time today. I always have a good time with you. And, you know, if you did have a good time with me and you're not subscribed, hit the button. You know the drill. For those of you who are subscribed, hey, thanks. Hit the like button. Comment. I don't know. Those things are supposed to do things, too. I have no idea. I'm just doing what the people tell me I'm supposed to do. So, you know, thank you for being subscribed and for being my sudsers and for being here for an awesome back to basics deep dive with essential oils and uh, fragrance oils. I am out of here for today. I'm going to go take a shower because, yes, uh, I do, again, appreciate you joining me for another day of 365 days of soap. I'll see you guys all again tomorrow for another round of soapy fun. Bye.